Hello, lovely people. Um, this is Mark J. Aquaviva with your um, weekly Yoga Solutions live broadcast. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so before we get going, uh, I, I had a couple of co um, questions on another thread. I po uh, po pasted over so that I could um, answer them on the live. Um, but uh, yeah, before I before I dive in, um, uh, I thought I'd I'd say what I'm um, what we're up to um, first. So um, let's see. Ne next weekend we're at the lovely uh, Debbie Farah's place uh, in Chorley, Lancashire. So if you're anywhere near Lancashire, I think there's a couple of places left on each day. We're doing a weekend, full immersion weekend. Uh, and that that'll be me and Abigail. Um, I'll be I'll be leading mostly, and um, Abigail will be uh, doing some hands-on uh, to help people experience what I'm talking about, and um, she'll no doubt uh, um, help with with some of her own insights into the into the subject matter. So um, yes, if you're looking for a full immersion experience and you're near the Lancashire area, do come along to to Chorley and get hold of um, Debbie Farah. Um, to book for that um, uh, yes okay so that's next weekend really looking forward to, to seeing Debbie again and she's a wonderful wonderful teacher I uh, do do check her out Sean's training courses um, workshops uh, really good teacher um, and then 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 following the weekend following Saturday I'm in Chichester so anyone in the Chichester area, or in, the, in um, uh, West in Sussex, is it West Sussex? I think uh, I'm at Cindy Robbins' home studio. It's a very small group, um, only uh, it's, a, it's a small studio, and there's two workshops: one in the morning, one in the afternoon. You can book for both if you choose for a discount. Um, yes, it's, uh, I don't know if there's any places left on that, but uh, if you want to work closely with me, those. Uh, uh, that's a good one, one to come to. That's next Saturday on the 11th of November. Um, Saturday week, I mean, sorry. Um, and the following weekend the uh, the is a, another training weekend up in Edinburgh. So uh, our course weekends, and I now, have now moved to the amazing Santosha studio. Um, oh, yes, and uh, yes, Cind uh, uh, Cindy's... Um, uh, studio is near is near Am 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 Maring, and uh, she's an amazing teacher. She's trained with me and um, done her own. She came from a Shivananda background, and um, so yes, do check out Cindy if you can. Um, yes, where was I? Yes, the following weekend um, we're back up in Edinburgh, at Santosha, Janice Binney's place. Um, uh, oh, amazing place! She's done a wonderful thing with this place, and uh, uh, she's a lovely person. Made us feel very, very welcome and um, a well-established teacher in, in her own right. And um, yes, she's uh, doing really good stuff to spread the word and, and, and um, uh, make people feel welcome in this amazing space that she's built at Santosha. Uh, but that's our training weekend. But on the Friday before, uh, and this happens every, every course weekend, uh, the Friday before, I will be doing a joint clinic workshop or a yoga clinic workshop in the afternoon. Uh, two till five, come along, bring anything you like, and I'll show you how the yoga works to um, either simplify a, a posture, relieve a physical issue, help with a joint problem, a back problem, sciatica, whatever you like. Um, don't, uh, the, the joint clinic or yoga clinic title is just to, just to say you don't have to be in, in the, I don't know, posture form to come. You, in fact, come and use the yoga to... Um, help yourself out of a, any difficulty that you find yourself in. So uh, that's November. There's other things. I, I, I'm in Twickenham in December, January. We're doing a, um, we're doing an open weekend workshop and um, featuring Pete Blackaby on the Saturday, and um, that, uh, that that's in January. I'll, I'll talk about that another time. Uh, I have all sorts of things going on. I'm going to do a Facebook Live in November, um, like this, but every day. Uh, for five days uh, it's it's um i want to call it a body mind experiment um to guide you through what happens when you spend time in communion with yourself you see uh and uh i'll, I'll make a little group for it and people and you can sign up for this and it's free of course um 
and then then what then what yes i'll be doing zoom zoom classes uh the same bit like skype but uh, can be a few participants that'll be that'll be in the beginning of next year anyway that's enough on that uh enough <laughs> letting you know what i'm doing let's get on with this and um oh hi kishori how are you doing nice to see you um let's see what's going on here so yes i posted uh, some questions from people there was one from debbie a very good question from debbie ellis um being quite oh let, let's put, let's put this up so you can see it you you can all see it um being quite flexible and hypermobile in the joints i tend to struggle with the wrist elbow shoulder scapula activation or holding mm. particularly at the shoulder scapula area my body wants to surrender rather than hold <laughs> any suggestions would be gratefully gratefully received uh great question debbie that's um yes i think that's one to jump on so let's um put that away again uh the clue the clue is here um it's in um my body wants to surrender rather than hold that is a very sensible body that's a very sensible response the um, it's the 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 thing that is the issue in this particular circumstance is there's, there's nothing wrong with your body um your body's desire to let go of tension uh, that is perfectly natural uh, what is unnatural is the idea of holding and it's the the idea of holding a posture that might have led to the um, hypermobility issue um, it's quite a possibility especially especially if there's a sort of stretch paradigm behind it um, <clears throat> yes so how to how to approach this in practicality so you're saying it was the it was the wrists elbows and shoulders so dog pose isn't it that's the thing to play with so let's have a go i'll do this on the carpet so i'm not too far from the camera so where to start yes hypermobility um that, that's a diagnosis um it may be that the joints hyperextend um but the question would be why why is that the case um my suggestion is that the most likely answer is that the joints are being asked to hyper extend or um, hmm, the joints are being asked to hyper extend by the way that you engage with support for example if you if you um, deliberately um, lock your arms straight that action hyper extends the elbows and if you um, then use that as weight bearing then what you do is you compress the hyperextended joint so that the actual um, shape of the joint capsule gets used to being compressed at one end and sort of uh, pushed open to another um, it's yes th th this is uh, hmm. it's not it's it's not a it's not a it's no criticism of uh, anyone's yoga but but um there is a culture in yoga of of doing of thinking of the body as a separate entity <laughs> which is the whole dualism uh, issue i guess and the thing that we're trying to um redress in our yoga um my, my take on things is 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 that um uh if you can if you can reverse that in, instead of the mind doing stuff to the body and understanding how it works which is a kind of a natural well natural is it's commonplace way of seeing things in the, these days um, how about we immerse ourselves in the body and listen to it like like you're saying the body wants to let go um so the for hyper extending elbows for hyper extended wrists for um tense shoulders that are probably taught to be pulled back and down um, in order to achieve the posture how about we let go of all the rules all the ideas of what we're supposed to do to our bodies and follow the perfectly natural desire to let go but there is this cohen of how can i feel supported 
because if we can investigate this this um, this question, you know, I want to let go, but I want to feel supported and and not collapse my joints. How do we do that? You know? Because if you can if you can investigate that in reality um, by perhaps giving some weight through your touch, and you might want to join me now. Um, you know, do, do, when I put my hands down, do I have to hyper? Do I have to hyperextend my wrists and spread my hands? Do I have to uh, lock my elbows? Do I have to pull my shoulders away from that to pull away from the ground? Um, because that's what I was taught. And then you know, with all that going on, yes, sure, I can feel supported by my arms. But is that what my body wants? Um, it's not what my body wants, that's for sure. Um, so if if you're listening to your body and you you know you say you you want to let go, um, oh yes, I'm with you. <laughs> let's let's work out how to let go. And um, the an answer to how we can let go. That is my lovely partner Abigail has just turned up. So if I <laughs> um, the answer to how we let, can let go is if we are supported through our joints, okay, as opposed to doing stuff to our joints to support them, to brace them against um, collapse. How about we find uh, lines of communication through our touch? And, and this is the answer. Um, basically, if you want to um, not be braced in your joints and including your shoulders, you find a relationship to your touch that allows the shoulders to... Um, Connect to what we are doing. So, so what I suggest you do is you play with this. First of all, organize yourself in a position where you can be light in your touch so that you can reorganize things and find different relationships. Because, you know, there's two, there's two directions to, our, to what we, we are doing. There is what we are doing with our touch, and then there is how that moves through our bones to support us. Um, because the fact is, if it doesn't move through our bones and joints, we have to brace the the, the, bone, the joints so as to not collapse. If that makes any sense. So, if we can find an arrangement to our touch where um, perhaps support is not so necessary, and we can play with the act of putting the hand down, so perhaps starting with the heel of the hand, the edge of the hand, and then culminating in the placing down of the thumb side of things you can get a sense of how the bones relate to that and that's the act of putting your hand down and there will be an internal rotation a pronation of the hand that is part of the act of supporting yourself and then um you know we, we give that some weight and if the weight makes us collapse our joints then we hold against our joints but if we can then actively use our touch, which is kind of the other direction. It's kind of from where the pads of the thumbs touch the ground, uh, forwards through the fingers, and then radiating out sideways through the fingers, so that we start to get axial support through our bones. And we're designed to be supported through our bones, otherwise, um, well, we wouldn't really need them <laughs> so much. You know, we're supposed to take weight through our bones, not carry weight with the muscles around the joints. So if we can find a way of using our touch, which is a little more from the inner touch radiating out, then that outward action through the hands, which is, I think, why people are taught to spread their hands, an outward action through the hands supports back through our bones, through our shoulder girdle, so that the shoulder girdle doesn't have to be pulled away from the ground. What we're looking for is support that leaves us um, free to breathe in the relationship between our shoulders and our ribs, rather than having to hoik our shoulders down our back to pull ourselves up with muscles. So, hmm. in this investigation, we're just looking to release tension. But the way we're going to release tension is if we are supported by our touch. So it is our quality of touch uh, putting the hand down, and the quality of support, the action of using our touch to support ourselves, that determines whether we are, we can rest our spines through our bones into support, rather than resting our spines into the effort of holding our weight, you see. 
if you can find lines of support uh, to and from your touch as you breathe and as you release the breath, then the result is a sort of softness around the joints because we don't need to brace against hypermobility. Um, it's a sort of springy responsiveness from the touch because we can give our weight and our spines and our breath to our touch and the touch responds in the other direction to support through our bones through our breathing through the release of the breath to the spine and if our interactive rhythmic engagement with these things leads us to feeling supported all the way through the spine then letting go leads to precisely that sense of total support through the bones and the spine. And of course, when you're supported, you don't have to hold tension. Not to say that there won't be work going on, but it will be uh, responsive work. And that work will be the stuff that um, sort of integrates your relationships, integrates your relationships through joints so that they don't have to be pulled around to support you, you see? So it's, it's, it's kind of a simple solution that's really hard to find. Because, you know, we're, we're used to measuring our support by how, how much we do, you know, by the tensions and efforts that seem to work to support us. Um, those tensions and efforts, it's, it's basically a musculature, change as we adjust the lines of support through our structure. It's sort of the difference between deciding to be a suspension bridge and your job is to be that which holds you up and being a Roman bridge, which is to do with deciding to be that which supports you through, through its axis. You know? um, that second version leads to freedom, leads to freedom and release. Um, at the same time as axial support. So everything that works in response to those things becomes um, a function of breathing and release. So, you know, that would lead to the question you're asking, you know. Um, my body just wants to surrender. Absolutely. The body needs to surrender, but it needs to feel safe to do so. Um, if, if you are of a hypermobile tendency, then you're capable of surrendering even if there isn't support. Now, a lot of people are not, so they become stiff instead. And there's different, these are different responses. But, if you, but what, whoever you are, whether, you're, um, whether you find yourself as stiff or hypermobile, you can um, look for support to travel from your actions through your bones and joints axially. And the result for the stiff person will be more freedom. The result for the hypermobile person will be more centered support. So I hope that answers the question on some level. Um, there was another one. Um, it was from Gail asking about, uh, where is it now? How, how to keep the investigation stimulated. Well, um, you just got to keep interested, stay interested, I guess. Um, I don't know, I've been I've been looking at this stuff for, as an adult for twenty five years now, and I haven't haven't lost interest yet. <laughs> it remains fascinating, and you know why is that? I think it's because I I don't feel like I'm in the process of of accumulating information, um, and applying that to my body. If if I was doing that, I I would have got it. Um, 20 years ago and would have got subsequently bored. But what I'm in the process, I am in a process constantly of refining relationships between parts of myself. And also in uh, my, my mission is to share this with other people. So I have a motivation to do it apart from myself. Um, that keeps it absolutely fascinating for me because I want to help not only myself, but um, the people I meet, it uh, floats my boat. Makes me feel good. 
So that, there's my motivation. Um, you've got to find your own, I guess. But uh, I think rather than learning what to do, explore how you're doing it and know that it will be different every day. That, to me, is yoga. Okay, I um, hope that helps. I think that'll, that'll do. I've, um, I, I, there you go. There's my bell. <laughs> that means I'm done. Um, yes. So if you if you've had any if you got any benefit from that, I, did, I felt like I did a lot of talking today, but um, never mind. Uh, it happens. <laughs> um, if you if you uh, got any benefit from that, f feel free to share it around Facebook. I'll be very grateful. Um, if if you if it helps one other person, then you've done me a great favour. So. Um, uh, I thank you in advance, and I. This is Mark Jack with Eva signing off of the Aqua Viva School of Yoga. I shall see you same time, same place next week, um, Tuesday, ten thirty a.m. Namaste. <laughs>